Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Judge Dread Countdown Sector 106. In the last episode, we were able to bust some Ziz dealers and found multiples of the Voice of Dread toy, which seems to be counting down. We don't know exactly what it's counting down to, but it's probably not good. We're back on the beat, and it looks like we have two choices to go here. We have a report of a drunk on nearby Carry Walk, currently going to the closest location where a crime has been reported. Or, Control reports a group of young juvies acting suspiciously near some derelict buildings on Cooper Street. So, we've got a choice here. Hmm. The, the group of young juvies seems to be the most probable one to go to, since they're near derelict buildings. But I think we're going to try the drunk on Carry Walk and see if that leads us to anywhere interesting. If not, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I have a bookmark set right here, and if nothing happens regarding this drunk, we'll just head back to this spot. We haven't done that yet, but I do have that as a backup, just in case things go horribly, horribly wrong. So let's check out what this drunk has to say. The ride to Carry Walk is both short and uneventful. The place was once a popular spot for clubs, bars, restaurants, and other entertainment venues, but its heyday was well over a decade ago. The few remaining businesses are run down and do not attract the type of clientele they once did. It is now considered a minor crime hotspot, with drunken behavior being the most common offense. You can see the trouble ahead, such as it is. A citizen wearing a light blue ratarak and blue mock jeans is leaning against a street light, vomiting profusely. Indeed, looking at the area around him, it's obvious that this is all he's been doing for the last few minutes, a minor public nuisance offense. As you approach, he sees you and waves. Judge, thank grud, down the alleyway. It's horrible. Someone's been murdered. You glance down the alleyway, indicated by the man's pointing finger, and sure enough, there appears to be a body there. Suddenly, it does not look like you are dealing with anything as petty as a drunk, but instead have a murderer and the first witness to come across the scene. If you approach the body, interrogate the witness. Third option is to check the immediate vicinity for clues. Let's check the body first. You move forward and carefully check the body. You see instantly that the man is dead. His extensive injuries are so severe that no one could possibly survive them. The bloody corpse has been cut open and its entrails lie half outside the cadaver. A brief inspection seems to indicate that some of the internal organs may have been removed. It is possible that this is the work of organ leggers. It looks as though a las... A laser knife has been used on the victim. On the body, there is no identification or valuables, but the perps, perp or perps responsible could not have left the scene too long ago because the pool of blood around the corpse is still slowly expanding. Check the immediate vicinity for clues or interrogate the witness. Let's see what the witness has to say. The witness is not much help. He claims that he did not he hear or see anything, having only just left the Bopalot bar a few minutes ago. He was on his way home when he noticed the body. He appears to be in a state of shock. Well, I guess we'll check the vicinity for clues. Uh-oh. There's a trail of blood leading away from the body into the shadows. You inform control and follow the glistening trail of red, leaving your lawmaster behind in order to navigate the narrow, winding alleyway. The trail eventually leads to a parallel street behind various local establishments. There's an abundance of loose rubbish and garbage dumpsters. You continue to move past the garbage area until you notice the lid on one of the dumpsters to be slightly open, with a gun barrel pointed out from underneath. Did you manage to spend some time in the sleep machine while you were in the Sector House 106 earlier today? Yes, I did. You roll and take cover as the laser blast narrowly misses you. It's a good thing fatigue isn't taking its toll. Indeed. We can open fire at the perp using armor-piercing rounds to pierce the reinforced metal dumpster, or use heat seeker ammunition instead to home in on the body heat of whoever's hiding in the dumpster. Well, I mean, if he's in a dumpster, armor piercing is the way to go. Let's go with that. Your rounds make a mockery of any protection provided by the gunman's cover, and you engage in a ferocious firefight. Twelve or better. Crap. That's embarrassing. Your bullets shred the ambusher's hiding place and his return fire soon stops. He seems to be taken care of, but you have been injured in this encounter too. You lose four vitality. How much vitality do I have? 24 out of 38. Could be better, but could be a lot worse. So let's go with that. And we do indeed still live. You cautiously move forward to ensure your target is dead. Upon doing so, you ponder your next move. We can either search the gunman and attempt to identify the attacker, or continue to follow the trail of blood which continues and leads across the street. Let's see who this person is who just started randomly shooting at us. 
You climb into the dumpster and check for identification on the bloody corpse. You find an identity card in the name of Josh Rogan, but with no fixed abode. You contact Control to find out what information Justice Department holds on him. You would not discover any items on his body which could have come from the murder victim in the alley. Control returns to you with a summary on the perp. Rogan is a known criminal with several convictions for assault, tap, and other petty thefts. His known associates include one Harry Turbo and one Vincent Lee, who have similar backgrounds. All three have been known to be working together over the course of the last decade, but it's worth noting that they have spent the majority of that time in ISO cubes, or in the case of Harry Turbo, a stint in the Psycho cubes. Ugh. You continue to follow the trail of blood which continues and leads across the street. So we broke up the trio. You quickly cross the street and move down an underpass, past a vandalized Justice Department camera. Further along, the underpass splits into two different corridor directions. The trail of blood leads to your right, but you can hear the distant sound of feet running to your left. Ooh, you can follow the trail of blood or chase after the footsteps you heard. Let's do that. Let's chase after the footsteps because the trail of blood's still going to be there. You run down the underpass to find it comes out on a busy pedway. There's no sign of the unknown runner you were chasing. Questioning nearby citizens only gets you blank looks and unhelpful replies. Another vandalized camera nearby rules out using PSU to find whoever you were trying to follow. At this point, Control informs you of a citizen running amok in the nearby bus terminal. You make your way there quickly. As you arrive on the scene, you see a chaotic mob of citizens panicking and fleeing. You enter the building and see a very large man who appears to be biting and gnawing at the head of another citizen. The victim is obviously very seriously injured and is un unable to break free from the larger man's grasp. Oh crap, um, let's shoot the man where he stands. Seeing your intention, the perp lifts his victim and places him between yourself and your gun. With the perp using his prisoner as a human shield, it'll be a very difficult shot. Uh, if you go through the sh go with the shot anyway, decide not to risk this particular shot in order the perp to surrender or attempt to subdue him with your day stick. Let's try and get him to surrender. You need to make an authority roll. Oy. Okay, I've been rolling low. That's low. You are the law. Pass judgment. Smartest thing you'll do this year. The man stops what he is doing and then calmly lies on the floor, waiting for you to handcuff him. It is obvious he knows the drill, and as you secure your prisoner, he says just one word. Sorry. You check his identity and confirm he is one Harry Turbo. Oh, the guy in the Psycho Cubes. You approach the man and look into a nearby bag that witnesses tell you he was carrying. Within the bag, you see various raw organs, almost certainly from the body you found earlier. Apart from the organs, it appears he does not have anything else from the murder victim. You question the nearby shaken citizens in the terminal security and confirm the man came here alone. If he was with Vincent Lee, as seems probable given you have not found any stolen items, then the latter has long since fled. You inform control of Lee's probable escape and tell them to put out an arrest warrant in his name for questioning about the murder. Having dealt with the situation as well as you can, you are now ready to continue your patrol. Control confirms there are numerous events requiring the presence of a judge. Heck, he may have... Vincent Lee may have been the person eaten. There are reports of an accident near the Ken Dodd block for the Dottery, an OAC, Old Age Citizen, block of sheltered housing, if you want to investigate. Finally, a member of the Jeff Bridges Dudes Gang <laughs> has approached you while you were getting your updates from Control. He claims there's a major act of vandalism occurring not far from your current location. So let's go ahead and bookmark. And oh, wait a minute, not there. That's to let's place a bookmark, not use a bookmark. Where'd you go? There you are. So we can come back here if we absolutely need to. I I have to check with the Jeff Bridges dudes gang. I there's no no option here. The Jeff Bridges dudes are a minor gang and less trouble compared to most, but they do have a running feud with the local students. One of the dudes stands in front of you. He is dressed in all in black with heavy eye shadow and long unkept hair. Well, that's not like the dude. I thought you should know, J-Man. Some drunken students is digging up the road on Truman Boulevard. They <clears throat> these are using some higher droids. I figure it must have to do with their drunken rag week, J-Man. Us dudes hate them students, so give them what for. Do you rush over to Truman to see what's going on? Check with Control instead, seeing if there are any public work scheduled on Truman and if their cameras are picking up anything, or wishing or wish to question the dudes further. Let's question the dudes further. You are immediately suspicious of any gang member, even a gang as comparatively harmless as the Bridges dudes, providing information on, of a crime voluntarily. Right, creep. What are you really doing? You ask, hoping to intimidate the youth. Nothing, J-Man. I just hate students. 
Unfortunately for the dude, your lie detector indicates he is not being truthful. You pin him to a nearby wall and search him. You find he is wearing a wig and has a student identity card in the name of Augie Prisco. Uh, surprise! Practical joke, you know. Rag week? Just a bit of harmless fun. Honest. It's obvious he does not consider wasting Justice Department time to be important. A two-year sentence hammers home the point as you secure him to a holding post. Wow, that's harsh. The last thing you need is an idiot student trying to pull a fast one. With the perp dealt with, you resume your patrol. You contact Control and they report a large disturbance outside of the Andy Warhol ex Exhibition Center. And, just to be safe... The Andy Warhol complex is one of the sector's success stories. The exhibition center is enormous. Its nine buildings are identical from the outside, but differentiated by vivid colors. Within, they serve a variety of different uses. The Cinematorium is considered to be one of the best in the city, and its 30-plus screens show both the latest blockbusters and smaller specialist releases. The museum and art gallery buildings house two of the best collections to be found anywhere, let alone within Mega City One. The money the trade halls bring in is vital to the sector's economy. The people of the sector are quite proud of the Warhol complex, especially when visitors from other sectors try to run it down. You check with Control. Apparently the disturbance is in Building 8, housing the Opera House and multiple auditoriums. The quickest route to reach it is via a pedway, although there is an easier to access route along the circular road around the complex. If you run up the pedway and send your lawmaster off to meet you at the scene, if you decide instead to ride to the disturbance using a circular road, or you can throw caution to the wind and ride your lawmaster up the pedway. Let's throw caution to the wind. That seems appropriate, doesn't it? You drive up the pedway, causing citizens to scurry out of your way by hugging the sides of the elevated walkway. It's just an interesting day. You're coming up to an intersection when you spot a group of young adults attacking citizens and robbing them. A tap gang at work. You drive through the group, taking them down by using your bike and the lawmaster. Kick. You stop and challenge the perps, or you drive through and shoot the muggers. Um, I'm gonna use the bike and the lawmaster kick. I do I do remember I'm pretty high on the lawmaster. My lawmaster skill is nine or, or eight, excuse me. I like those odds, we'll give that a shot. Your speed direct you speed directly towards them, knowing that this is an insanely dangerous tactic. If this goes wrong, who knows what could happen. You need to make a very important fitness check. Alrighty. Crap. You rolled a nine, which is not less than your fitness value of five. Oh, we have a fitness value of five? So our fitness value goes down. Oh, I was not aware of that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and use that bookmark. Now, I, I was not aware of that. So we're going to head back here. There we go. Let's run up the pedway and send the lawmaster off to meet us at the scene then. You dismount and make your way up the pedway, keen to get the disturbance as quickly as possible. As you run, you spot a group of young adults at an intersection who are scattering off in different directions. It's soon clear why. Several citizens are lying on the ground, clearly the recent victims of a tap gang. Hmm. Do you order the perps to stop threatening them with the full use of force if they do not comply? Do you shout a brief warning and then try and bring down one of the perps with a leg shot? Or chase after what looks to be the leader of the gang and arrest him? Well, if we take out the head, the body should die. Let's try after that. Let's try that. You focus in on one of the perps, the one who seems to tell the others to split up. You suspect him to be the leader of the gang and set off in pursuit of him. In spite of your age, your supreme fitness means you quickly gain ground. You close in on your target, but the tap realizes he's not going to escape and whirls around with a small gun in his hand. Eat lead, dread, he cries. Oh, he knows who we are. Um, I want to... Do we rush forward and try and capture him alive or return fire? We need to... I want to find out what's going on here, especially since he knows who I am. So let's try and capture him alive. Oh crap, we gotta do a fitness check again? Yeah, that didn't work. Let's see what actually happens here. It must be this punk's his, or it must be this punk's lucky day. Surprisingly, he scores a hit to your body and you collapse to the ground, shocked with sudden pain. You lose seven vitality. Turn to page 660, because I live. You get to your feet. These creeps have no idea what they've gotten themselves into. No one gets the better of Judge Dredd. With your day stick in hand, you prepare to meet the perp at melee. Unfazed, the perp discards his gun for a knife. Time to fight. Well, I have 17 and 16. Let's give this a shot. He has some offense. Not a whole lot of defense, though. We got him in one shot. Wake up in an ISO cell with a headache. 
With the leader of the Tap Gang lying at your feet, oh, and unable to resist arrest, you secure him as your prisoner. Searching his pockets, you find an assortment of illegal items on them, and you take care to place them in your bike storage containers for later destruction. You find one of the small black boxes with a button on it and manage to avoid pressing it for once. You question your prisoner and gain the names of the other gang members and tell Control to pick him up and track down the rest of the gang. Eager to resolve the reported disturbance, you continue on your patrol. Now that's something. We've gotten quite a few of these. And we're in a new area, so bookmark that. That guy looks happy. You arrive at the plaza in front of one of the nine complex buildings. This is one consisting of auditoriums for speeches, rallies, and music. The scene you see is far from harmonious, however. Almost everywhere you look, there is chaos as citizens are run in every direction, squeezing almost everything in sight. You see citizens by a taxi rank sprawled over the vehicles. Nearby, a set of traffic lights are being bended dangerously low under the weight of a dozen or so other citizens. This crazed mob shows no signs of stopping. Several robots are attempting to escape their embrace, and a number of vagrants are trying to stagger away. This crowd of over-affectionate and deranged citizens shows no signs of calming down. Ugh. Professor Jonkins will improve your life with some simple lifestyle advice. Hug who you hate. <laughs> You can contact Control and see if this could be related to anything currently running in Warhol. You can try and see if Psy Division has any information on any paranormal events that could cause this. You can confront the crowd ordering them to disperse or get closer to try and see if any clues as to the reason by the strange behavior of the citizens. Let's contact Control. That's, they're there for a reason. Control quickly comes back with some information. This may be what you're looking for, Dredd. Apparently, a professor, Stan Morkley, is supposed to be or supposed to be giving a series of lecture at Warhol, or Warhol called "Hug Who You Hate." It could explain what the citizens are doing, although it seems they may be taking it a bit to an extreme. Well, nothing new there. Since when have the citizens of Mega City One not taken something to the extreme? Okay, we can confront the crowd and order them to disperse. We can call in for riot crowd support instead. Or you can move in and start to come down hard on any law breaking. Hmm. Let's call in riot support. Let's get in some big guns. Control confirms that riot control is on its way, but will not arrive immediately. Apparently, most of the riot squad are dealing with a three way gang fight in another part of the sector, involving some of the largest and most violent gangs in the neighborhood. If you wait for your backup to arrive, confront the crowd and order them to disperse, or bring out your day stick and crack some skulls. I don't think I don't I'm probably gonna get hugged to death if I try and confront them, so let's just break out the day stick. You aggressively move forward and start to dish out punishment, warning the citizens that they will face the full force of the law unless they disperse. You lash out again and again with your day stick and citizens fall before you. A few well placed shots down others as you make slow progress through the crowd. But still they come. Your push back as the numbers threaten to overwhelm you. You take one vitality damage as a result of this skirmish. Eh. Well, yeah, let's keep on dishing more of the same. The mob continues to surge forward. It's almost impossible to stay on your feet due to the press, and you begin to tire, your arms aching from the onslaught. That's not good. Let's try this. An eventness value of four. Holy crap. Let's go ahead and use a bookmark. And we get back here. And get the information. And now let's just confront the crowd. Actually, no, no, let's do, uh, we'll call for the riot support. And now order them to disperse. At the sound of your voice, the nearest citizens raise their heads and look towards you. It's dread, one says. Then the cry is taken up. Dread! 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 More and more of the crowd begin looking in your direction, and some begin to move towards you. Hundreds of citizens have locked their eyes on you and begin walking forward. This wasn't alarming enough. They suddenly break into a run, their arms wide open. I'm gonna hug you. An abrupt movement to your right catches your eye and suddenly you are knocked to the ground by a large man. You roll free after punching him in the jaw and jump to your feet. The mob is far closer than you'd like, threatening to smother you with its crazed affection. Ooh. Well, sorry. The time to draw the lawgiver and pick off the leaders if it's going to be hug who you hate. You aim your lawgiver, but it's unclear who is leading the mob. They seem to be all caught up in the moment. You shoot those closest to you, bringing down several with well-placed leg shots. See, I'm not actually killing them. However, it becomes apparent that the rest of the crowd are not going to be stopped by just a few casualties among their number. As they sweep forward, you, you can draw your day stick and begin to met out some punishment or make a break for it, hoping support can arrive quickly enough. I think we're going to have to do that because that didn't work the last time. 
You blast a gap in the crowd, unleashing a volley of rounds and killing several of the mob. Oh, that escalated quickly. A small gap appears and you take advantage of it, sprinting away even as you are pummeled by countless fists and knees. You take three vitality damage. But we're still standing. When backup arrives, you are hanging halfway on up on a lamppost. The mob would have uprooted if it helped not arrive so promptly. All around you are dead and disabled citizens. Some surrender meekly and some flee down side alleys as other judges finally arrive and chase them down. Relative quiet descends on the plaza, but bodies and damaged property are scattered all over. You question the prisoners and discover they were told to hug what they hated at the presentation they were attending, and to explain why the mob, almost to a person, ignored everything else when you arrived. With the scene under control, you search for the good professor giving the talk. You find him among the dead, crushed like most of the victims of the mob. You trace the culprits and ask why they would hug him to death. We hate people who tell us what to do, they replied. Your sentence is surviving perps to a term in the Psycho Cubes. Perhaps the shrinks will be able to explain what exactly happened here, and why, although you doubt it. Where are we right now? We've got 14 vitality. And... Ooh, that looks interesting. I'm very cyberpunkish. Let's go ahead and uh, bookmark. And I think we're going to go ahead and end it here, guys. We're getting beaten to a pulp. Oh, vitality is at 29 now. Huzzah, your backup units refill your ammunition and med judges tend to you. Cool. So never mind, we're not nearly as in bad shape as we were. But um, I'll go ahead and end it here. It was an interesting uh, session. If you liked the video, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.